Abbas, over to you. Hi, John. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, thank you also to The Economist uh, for hosting this event. And a uh, big hello to my co-panelists. Uh, some of you I've met, some of you I haven't. Zurab, uh, we've been trying to uh, meet uh, for quite some time. We were going to meet a few weeks ago in uh, Croatia. Uh, very soon, I hope we can meet. Obviously, Harris, I know. Francois, I met uh, in January uh, in his office. And of course, Rita, I hope to meet you in uh, September. There is a resort uh, forum uh, in Lisbon, so maybe we'll get the chance to uh, meet there. Now, a very interesting question, uh, which was part of uh, the title of today's uh, panel, was what uh, have we learned from past crises? And I think that's a very interesting one. And uh, the, the first thing that crises teach us is that when faced with uncertainty, um, the best decisions are not the perfect decisions. The best decisions are those decisions that are quick, even though we don't uh, know all the facts. And um, as uh, with many countries, Cyprus was also one of the first to react in dealing with the pandemic. Our strong and early action has led to excellent uh, epidemiological results. Uh, actually, uh, this has enabled us to restart the economy on the 4th of May. Um, and we expect a full containment of the virus uh, by the end of this week, uh, which means that uh, 9th June, we um, will um, open our airports again uh, for business uh, as usual. And that's very, very important. It was our target from the beginning, and it seems that uh, we are reaching it. Now, obviously, our approach has focused on three things. I'm sure quite similar to other governments. The first was to stabilize our health system so that it doesn't get overwhelmed. The second was to ensure liquidity for our businesses. And the third, to ensure that staff would be able to keep their jobs until uh, the restart of our economy. Um, so achieving these three targets have actually enabled or allowed our tourism industry to stay in the game for 2020. And where everything looked completely in the dark, it seems that we are gonna be able to restart um, pretty soon. Uh, nevertheless, this pandemic has uh, really shaken the groundwork of the world we knew. Um, and especially travelers have been scarred uh, by what we have all been through in the last three weeks, three months, I'm sorry. So I think what's going to be vital, especially in the short term uh, for the tourism industry, is to focus on what uh, I like to call the tourism of rebuilding trust. Actually, Zurab mentioned something similar before, the tourism of rebuilding trust. And this means going back to basics and actually promoting them. I'll give you some examples related to Cyprus so that we can be a bit more practical. I mean, obviously, no Cyprus has a lovely island, lots to see, lots to do, ideal holiday destination with great beaches and sun. But, you know, in these times of uncertainty and anxiety, I don't think uh, the sun and the sea and uh, the beautiful um, water is the most important thing on people's minds. People care if you have an open air lifestyle, an abundance of personal space, a slow rhythm of life, homegrown food, clean air, how safe you are, the ratio of intensive care units. Who in the tourism industry would ever have thought that this number is important actually today? Well, it is. And uh, these are examples of statistics and information that the traveler post COVID will need to hear uh, from all destinations, not just uh, Cyprus. Now, what uh, do we include in the tourism of rebuilding trust? I think there's four key pillars. The first is uh, the local community. Uh, we need to treat it better through promoting localism, supporting unique uh, micro experiences, and creating a level playing field of social opportunity. This builds trust between us of the tourism industry and our local communities. The second pillar is the pillar of the environment. We need to uh, show people or to gain their trust that tourism also cares about the environment. Uh, we need to respect it more by supporting less known areas, promoting slower tourism, and uh, taking uh, destination capacity 
into consideration. We've been guilty of this in the past. The third uh, pillar is health. And I say that because tourism should not only be about uh, where we go and what we see. Tourism should also be about what we offer and how we manage to rejuvenate the spirit, the mind and the body of people through holistic wellness, oneness with nature and uh, relief from the daily stress of life. The final pillar, and this is my closing remarks, is a pillar that no country, especially in the Mediterranean, can uh, achieve alone. It's the concept of regional collaboration. And it's also key to the tourism of rebuilding trust. What do I mean by that? We are all in the same boat. Now, it has become very, very obvious. 20% of world tourists come to the Mediterranean region. And for the first time in decades, we have all suffered together in the last three months. There has been no competition amongst us because our common enemy, this virus, has wiped everything out. And uh, this, I think, is a message. It's a wake-up call that especially our region cannot take tourism for granted. And I'm very happy to hear Zurab talk about this constantly. It's a wake-up call that uh, we as a region need to safeguard tourism even more than other regions and um, work together to jointly repurpose um, our tourism industries. Uh, it's very, very important. We employ so many people and um, I think the future is here for us to take advantage of. That's all from me and uh, I look forward to your questions, uh, John.